Welcome to the third video in a series of video tutorials on EPA Method 334.0, Expectations for Public Water Systems in Pennsylvania. Here is what you'll learn about in this video. We will begin by taking a look at primary standards. What are they? What is their purpose relative to Method 334.0? And how should they be used? Then we will cover dilutions. How to calculate the desired dilution, as well as demonstration of proper handling and laboratory technique needed for diluting primary standards. There are actually two types of check standards that are discussed in Method 334.0, primary aqueous standards and secondary gel or liquid standards. Each standard has a defined role and specific requirements outlined in the method. In this video, we will focus on primary standards. Secondary standards will be covered in a later video. Primary standards come prepackaged at a certified concentration that will be indicated by the manufacturer. They must be produced in a manner that is traceable to the National Institute of Science and Technology, NIST. NIST traceability refers to a quality assurance program that certifies that a laboratory or manufacturer is equipped to calibrate to NIST standards and that any products match those NIST maintained measurement standards. Prior to use, primary standards require dilution using reagent grade water to achieve a concentration found in drinking water. Reagent grade water may include distilled, deionized, organic free, or chlorine demand free water. Standards must be diluted just prior to use. You will likely achieve the best results by analyzing a diluted standard as soon as possible following dilution. This is because the chlorine degasses and the concentration degrades quickly. Check standards are created for the particular range being used. Primary standard analysis can be used to evaluate the analyst, the equipment, and the reagents used for a specific method. Primary standard protocols in Method 334.0 can be applied to all of the approved grab sample methods and associated equipment. Most importantly, primary standard protocols included in Method 334.0 are a required component of the method. As I mentioned, primary standards are purchased in a concentrated form and must be diluted prior to use. In this video, we will review the steps for planning, calculating, and performing your dilution. A job aid has been created and is available at this link that walks through all of the steps of dilutions for your future use. The link to the job aid is available in the video description below. Now let's review how to calculate the appropriate dilution. Planning your dilution is an important first step. Do you remember the dilution formula from basic chemistry class? C1 times V1 equals C2 times V2. The concentration of the concentrated standard times the volume of the concentrated standard used, or initial concentration times initial volume, is equal to the concentration of the final dilution times the volume of the diluted standard, or final concentration times final volume. This calculation is based on the premise that when you do a dilution, the amount of material in solution remains the same, just the volume and therefore the concentration changes. Let's visualize this concept. If this beaker contains 5 milligrams of the purple solute in 100 milliliters or one tenth of a liter of solvent, the concentration is 5 milligrams per one tenth of a liter or 50 milligrams per liter. Now, if this larger beaker contains those same 5 milligrams of purple solute diluted to a volume of 1,000 milliliters or one liter of solvent, the new concentration is 5 milligrams per liter. If we plug those numbers into our formula, we can see that the equation is true. Both solutions contain the same 5 milligrams of solute. Now let's apply this to our concentrated primary standards. If we know we want a final concentration of 0.5 milligrams per liter and a final volume of 100 milliliters, and we know that our initial concentration is 64.2 milligrams per liter, certified by the manufacturer, we can determine the volume we need of the concentrated standard. We start by rearranging the formula. Divide both sides of the equation by C1. C1 cancels out of the numerator and denominator on the left side of the equation, leaving just V1 or initial volume. 
then plug in the numbers, and solve. So we have calculated that we need 0.779 milliliters of the concentrated standard with a concentration of 64.2 milligrams per liter to make a 100 milliliter dilution with a concentration of 0.5 milligrams per liter. You may be wondering what supplies do I need in order to do these dilutions? Let's review the equipment and materials needed to do dilutions. These are also listed on the job aid, available at the link in the video description below. To start, you need your primary standards. You will also need something to empty the ampule into, such as a small beaker or inert medicine or specimen cup, because you probably won't be able to pipette out of the narrow neck of the ampule. You also need an adjustable pipette to measure the calculated volume of primary standard and disposable pipette tips. Next, you need Class A glassware. A volumetric flask at a volume of 100 milliliters is a good option. You will also need reagent grade water and a rinse bottle for dispensing it. You may also need a few ancillary supplies such as gloves, safety glasses, and a calculator. Now let's review the steps in a dilution of primary standard, and then we will have a dilution demonstration for you to view. Add about half the volume of reagent grade water to the volumetric flask. For example, add about 50 milliliters if the final volume will be 100 milliliters. Break open the certified primary standard ampule and pour into a chlorine demand-free container, such as a specimen cup or beaker. Adjust the pipette to the desired volume, which is V1 from your calculation. Use the pipette to draw the V1 volume from the specimen cup. Be sure to follow the manufacturer's instructions on how to use the brand of pipette you have. On many adjustable pipettes, the first stop of the button or plunger is for drawing solution into the tip. Pipette the V1 volume from the pipette tip into the volumetric flask. Again, check instructions for use, but for many adjustable pipettes, the second stop is for expelling solution from the tip. Add the reagent grade dilution water to the volumetric flask. Allow a small amount of room in the neck and then use a wash bottle of reagent grade water or a dropper to fill it to the graduation mark. Cap the flask and invert gently to mix the solution. In this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate and prepare a diluted chlorine primary standard. And this standard can then be used for either your initial or your routine quarterly verifications that are required under the grab sample method within EPA method 334.0. All right, before I begin my dilution, I wanna make sure that I have everything I need so that I'm ready to go. So I'm going to go through and review all of my supplies. First, I have my primary chlorine standard ampule with a certified concentration of 66.5 milligrams per liter. Now for this particular manufacturer, that concentration is listed right here on the label. For other manufacturers, they might provide some sort of certification or documentation with that concentration. One thing I want to note before I move further is that once you open up this ampule, the chlorine is going to start to off-gas, which will ultimately affect your concentration. So you want to make sure that you have everything ready to go before you actually open up this ampule. So besides my chlorine standard, I have a 100 ml volumetric flask. I have my adjustable pipette and my disposable pipette tips. I have my reagent grade dilution water, which is chlorine demand free. And then I also have my rinse bottle. And then last but not least, I have a small medicine cup here, which is made of an inert material. And I'm going to use this to empty my chlorine solution, my chlorine concentration into here, because as you can see, the top of this is very narrow. So you won't be able to fit the pipette tip into the vial um, to actually make your dilution. So you're just going to put that into this cup. Before I crack open the ampule, I need to plan my dilution. I know that I need to prepare 100 milliliters of a 0.5 milligram per liter standard. 
Since my primary standard has a concentration of 66.5 milligrams per liter, I can use the C1 times V1 equals C2 times V2 formula to determine the volume of concentrated standard that I need. So C1 is the initial concentration of 66.5 milligrams per liter. And V1 is the unknown that I need to solve for. C2 is the concentration of the standard that I want to prepare, which we said was 0.5 milligrams per liter. And V2 is the 100 milliliters. So I'll divide both sides by C1, which is the 66.5 milligrams per liter. And on this side, these will cancel each other out. So we're left with V1. And on this side, these cancel each other out. So if I plug this into my calculator, I'll end up with a V1 of 0 0.752 milliliters. And this is the volume of primary standard that I will pipette into the volumetric flask for dilution. Now since I know I want to work quickly once I open my ampule, I want to make sure that my pipette is ready to go. The pipette that I'm going to use here works in a range of 100 to 1,000 microliters, which is equivalent to 0 0.10 to 1.0 milliliters. So we know from our calculation that we need a volume of 0 0.752 milliliters, which is equi equivalent to 752 microliters. So here on the pipette, there is a window that gives you the numbers, the volume. So right now it says 745 microliters. I'm just going to adjust that until it says 752 so that I know I'm ready to go and I have the correct volume that I'm going to be pipetting into my standard or into my volumetric flask. The next thing I need is a pipette tip. And in order to get that on the pipette, you're just going to firmly press the pipette down onto one of the tips and then remove it from the box. So my pipette is now ready to go. The next thing I want to do is fill my 100 milliliter volumetric flask half full with some reagent grade water. Reagent grade water can also be called organic free water, distilled, deionized, or chlorine demand free. So the reason that I'm going to fill this halfway before I put any standard in is that you don't want to be putting standard into the volumetric flask without any water in it to kind of mix. So just eyeball about halfway. And now I'm ready to break open my standard. In order to break open this glass vial, you want to have either a plastic breaker, such as this, which you can buy, or you could wrap it in a paper towel, but you want to make sure that you're protecting your hands. You don't want to just break it off or you could cut yourself from the rough glass. So before I open this up, I want to make sure that I have on my gloves and my safety goggles. As I said before, I'm not going to be able to fit the pipette tip into the actual vial. So I emptied my standard into one of these medicine cups. And this is a chlorine demand free, made of inert material. You don't have to use a medicine cup, but make sure that whatever you do use to empty the standard into is chlorine demand free. Another good option would be a glass beaker. So, with this particular pipette, in order to get the standard into the pipette tip, you press down the button till the first stop. And then you want to make sure that you submerge the tip below the standard and then slowly release the button. You want to make sure that you do this very slowly and in a controlled manner because if you release the button too quickly, you can actually get some of the standard up into the pipette and you don't want to do that. So I have the standard that I need in my pipette tip now 
And in order to get it into my volumetric flask, I'm just going to press that in there and then depress to the second stop. So now you can see my puppet tip is empty and we have all the standard that we need in our volumetric flask. Now comes the tricky part. I have to make sure that I fill the rest of the flask with our reagent grade water without going above the line. All class A glassware is calibrated to exactly the volume that it should be. So this, since this is a 100 milliliter volumetric flask, as long as I have my line for the water, the meniscus is at the red line, I know that I have exactly 100 milliliters in here. So in order to finish it off, you want to use the bottle until about the neck. And then to finish it off, you're going to use a bottle, such as this, a squirt bottle, to put just a small amount in until you make sure that the meniscus is at the bottom of that red line. So now I have the exact volume of reagent grade water and standard that I need. I'm going to place the cap back onto the volumetric flask and infer, invert a few times to make sure that it's well mixed. My standard is now ready to go, and as I said before, I can use this for either my initial or my routine quarterly verifications for method 334. Primary aqueous standards are needed for three different requirements of method 334.0. One is the analyst initial demonstration of capability. This is used to evaluate the accuracy and precision of each individual sampler who is analyzing grab samples for compliance purposes or comparative grab sampling. Next is the initial calibration verification for grab sample equipment. This verifies the accuracy of each meter or titrator. Third is routine calibration verification for grab sample equipment used for ongoing verification of meter or titrator accuracy. Each of these will be covered in much greater detail in subsequent videos in this series. Independent reference sample kits are an option that is available for routine calibration checks. These kits contain a bottle of a pre-measured volume of chlorine demand-free water and an ampule of NIST traceable free chlorine solution. When mixed according to the manufacturer's instructions, each kit will produce a set volume of free chlorine solution at a concentration certified by the manufacturer. While they can be used for routine quarterly checks, they are not suitable for initial calibration verifications, as each kit only produces one concentration. The initial calibration verification requires standards diluted to three different concentrations. Let's review the key points from this video. Primary standards are aqueous concentrated standards that contain a certified concentration of free chlorine. They must be diluted using reagent grade water just prior to use. Primary standards are required for three separate components of method 334.0. In order to dilute the concentrated primary standards, it is important to first plan your dilution by calculating the appropriate volumes. Use the C1V1 equals C2V2 formula to calculate your dilution. Before beginning the dilution process, make sure you have the necessary equipment and materials ready. In the next video in this series, we will review the initial demonstration of capability, or IDC, for the GRAB method required by method 334.0.